In this video, I will perform a linear static analysis on a 2D axisymmetric solid. Full details of this exercise are on page 355 of the link PDF in the video description below. I'll minimize this, and the first thing I'll go ahead and do is create a folder. called I'll call it problem 06. Start Patron. The units for this example will be in inches, pounds, PSI. Go ahead and start my Patron database and save it to a directory I just made a moment ago. I'll click OK on the form on the right. I'll first start by creating four surfaces, or three actually. So here, I'll select surfaces XYZ. From the origin, I'll define a vector defining my width, height, and depth of the surface. So here the vector is 6 in the x, 0 in the y, and 0 in the z. I click apply. Now let me go ahead and reorient this so I see it from the bottom. And then make another surface with the vector of 2, 0, 10. And the origin from which the vector begins is 4, 0, 0.5. Click apply. The next surface has a vector of 6, 0, 0.5. And the origin point is 0, 0, 10.5. Hit enter. Now I have three surfaces. Now the problem statement wants me to make a comparison between the tree of six and the tree of three elements. So I will have to create a second set of these three surfaces. So under geometry, under transform, click surface. Here I will translate these three surfaces 15 inches in, in the y direction the z direction. So here I would type in the vector of 0, 0, and 15. And I select these three surfaces. I will then go to the meshing tab and I will apply some mesh seeds using the uniform method. So here, I know that these two curves have two elements, and we'll need a mesh seed with two elements. These ones will too, and these ones also. For this curve, I know I need five elements. So here I type in five, select this curve, automatically mesh seed, click this curve, click this curve, then this curve. Sometimes you may accidentally slip and click this curve. There's an undo button here in the top loft. So then carefully move your mouse and you'll see it's selected or highlighted so then click it. Now it's been seated. Next I know that I need 15 elements for these curves and I need 20 elements for the other curves. So let me go ahead and mesh this using surface mesher. The element shape is a tria. The first one we'll use the tria 3. I'll go ahead and select these three curves and click apply. Next we'll mesh using tria 6. We'll select these curves and then click apply. You'll notice I've selected 4, 5, and 6 here. Let's run an equivalence click apply. You'll see that there were duplicate notes here and here in these two spots. 
Now I can go ahead and define my materials by going to the Properties tab, click Isotropic, click and type material name as Matt under Input Properties. My Young's Modulus is 10, E6 PSI, and my Poisson Ratio is 0.33. Click OK, click Apply. In order to apply this material to the elements, I'll have to create a 2D solid property. So here under 2D properties, click 2D solid. Here under property name, call it 2D or solid prop or 2D solid prop. Under options, select axisymmetric. Under input properties, select this material click OK. Under application region, select all the curves, add them to the application region, click OK, and click apply. Now I can go to the load species tab. Before that, I'll display the model tree. So far I've defined my material and I've applied the material to the elements using the 2D solid property. Going back to load BCs tab, I will define my displacement constraint. I will call it symmetry. Under input data, I wish to restrain motion in the or translation in the, the z direction and about the y axis. So usually T1, T2, and T3 go to X, Y, and Z, and R1, R2, and R3 are rotations about the X, Y, and Z. Here I'm preventing translation in the Z direction, and I'm preventing translation about the Y. Click OK, and select the application region. You'll need to select the center line of each section. So here, I'll go ahead and use the FEM method. So the middle would be here, add it, and then the middle of this would be here. Click add, okay, and apply. Now I can go ahead and define my pressure. So here under element uniform, click pressure, type the name as pressure, these are two dimensional elements. So under target element type, click 2D. Under input data, the edge pressure is 1000 PSI. Click OK. Let me reorient this. Again, you look at it from the bottom view. Under select application region. Here on the right, you will want to select the free edge of element. Make sure that is on. So then simply drag your mouse and select the elements that are exposed. Click out there. Select these elements. Click add. And you'll notice they turn orange when selected. Click add. Here, do the same thing, but this time I'll zoom in on a little bit more so you see what I'm doing. And you'll see that I come to basically the middle of here. Add. Select and drag. Instead of adding, I can just hold the shift key and continue to select uh, element edges. Click add. So you see the edges we've selected are highlighted in orange here. Click OK and apply. And then quickly inspect this to make sure you haven't accidentally applied it to anywhere else. So here I can turn off the markers for the symmetry condition which are in blue here and the pressure. Now that I'm done setting up the model I can go to the analysis tab and analyze the entire model. Click apply and the job is submitted to NASTRAM for analysis. Once that is done, click XDB, 
click apply to import the result in the results tab click under quick plot fringe deformation I wish to view the radio displacements so click translational displacements here select the X component and for deformation result select this So this gives you an idea of what the deformation is like. Now in order to make a proper comparison, we'll look at the trio three elements here at the bottom. So let me hide the model browser tree. Go back to my results. I'm gonna zoom out a little. So here are the radio displacements for the three noted axisymmetric model. They have about uh, 1.97 and 3.17. So let me go ahead and switch to fringe. Here I want to view translational displacements. The X component is equivalently the radio displacement or radio component. Click apply before that. Let me just select these elements. These are a tree of three elements. So when I click apply, now I only have results for these elements. Notice it's sort of difficult to read the numbers here. So I can go to label style, click fixed, maybe make it five significant figures, click OK and apply. And here it's essentially the same values I would get here. Here the radio stress is about 25,000 and 33,000. So when I go back here, scroll down to stress tensor. And here I've noticed uh, the quantities of onmesis when it should be X component. So here what we have is the 25,000 and the negative 33,000. And that is the same value we got here. For hoop stress, we get a max of 30,000 PSI and a minimum of negative 38 PSI. So when I switch this to the Y component, which is the hoop component, I get the same thing here and here. Now for our axial stress, we get 6,000 PSI for the max and minimum is negative 8,000. So here, move this to the Z component, click apply. Now here I get 6,000 and negative 8,000. Now for our tree of six elements, what I'll have to do now is here under target entities, delete the ones there and say I want to plot these elements and I want to see the radial stresses. So here the max is 32,000 and the lowest is negative 44,000. So when we compare this to this, we, and we get the same results. Let me switch this to the hoop stress. Get negative 32 or 32,000 psi and negative 40,000 psi. And then when I look at the answer there, that is what we get. And then the actual stress is here. And we get uh, 1400 and negative 15,000. That's what we get maximum of approximately 1400 and a minimum of negative 15,000. Clean it here. Make sure to save. And this concludes this video.